Welcome to COIQ, a first of its kind video program about health innovators, early adopters, and influencers, and their stories about riding the roller coaster of healthcare innovation. I'm your host, Dr. Roxy, founder of Legacy DNA Marketing Group, and it's time to raise our COIQ. Welcome back to the show, COIQ listeners. On today's episode, I have the pleasure of speaking to Stacy Ruth. She is the co-founder and CEO for Air Health. And um, I am really excited to have this conversation with her today. For you that are other health innovators in the trenches, I think that she's going to have a lot of wisdom and just her experience about commercializing innovation. I think she's going to have a lot of wisdom to share with us today. So thank you for joining us, Stacy. Thank you for having me, Dr. Roxy. So, you know, what I like to do is just start off for people who don't know who you are, just to share a little bit about your background and what you're doing. So I am so excited. I have never shared my background so much. I, I have to tell you, I, I love it, right? You get, to, you get to put 20 years into a little a sound bite, and I like right, that. Right. <laughs> so my background uh, before starting Air Health uh, this year was in med device, and I have been both on the commercialization side. I actually carried a bag myself. So the first job that I had in healthcare was to sell capital equipment, okay. and I did that in the Tennessee, the Carolina. Carolinas and Georgia. Uh, from there, I moved more into leadership roles uh, with a sales organization, then really switched sides and, and became more of a business leader. And as a business leader, and my time was spent at Phillips Healthcare, and as a business leader there, uh, I had the opportunity to move all the way from the idea stage of products, really mm -hmm. in the med device, connected health, digital mm -hmm. propositions, mm -hmm. all the way through the product development cycle, and then responsible for commercializing those in a profitable way. So that's how I spent my last 10 years, uh, launched a venture in Boston, was one of the biggest accomplishments of the last few years, and I'm excited now to be in Orlando with Air Health. That's great. So I imagine that you have seen the world of healthcare technology evolve quite a bit over the last 10 years. It has evolved quite <laughs> quickly. And actually, it was that that evolution. If you look at telehealth, what telehealth's a 30-year journey, and yep. it's still to people like it's new, right? <laughs> and it's because they're seeing now the fruits of all of that labor and the commercialization process you know, come to fruition. Sure, sure. So I would say that, of course, it's evolved. It's evolved since 1999 when I started with Hewlett <laughs> Packard, you know, in medical sales. But the, the reality of it is, is that it's a slow noticing of that evolution and then a very fast, you know, uh, way to observe it once it's been commercialized. So I've sure. seen a lot. <laughs> yep. So, so let's share a little bit with our audience about, you know, what, what are you experiencing or what is it like riding this roller coaster of healthcare innovation? Cause I say it's like the wild, wild west. It's just crazy out there. So, you know, what is it like for you? Yes, so you're calling it a roller coaster, and certainly the startup life, it's up, it's down, <laughs> it's every day, and sometimes twice before lunch, right? <laughs> yep, yep. Uh, but I always looked at it as a, like an ocean and mm -hmm. the set of waves that are coming in. And what I always looked to do when we were scoping mm -hmm. out the marketplace, looking for what some would call white space, or mm -hmm. looking for just that little sliver of market opportunity where you could solve a problem that wasn't being solved very well. Mm -hmm. I tend to watch the ocean come in, and I like to see things when they're coming up on their crest. Okay. So what it's like for me at, at Air Health is we're really looking at taking a a digital technology that's not so digital today, but it's a very well-established medical technology that has reached that crest of maturity. And then you literally ride the wave in with the digital health theme. That's exciting. 
It is exciting. <laughs> That's really exciting. It's like you're surfing, right? <laughs> yeah, I'm not a great surfer. I have tried. <laughs> Riding the wave. Um, so, you know, one of the things that I think is so interesting about your story and what you're doing is, you know, your background in corporate America. You met, mentioned HP, you mentioned Philips. And and so, you know, what you're doing is is really different. So, um, you know, how ha- how is it different for you commercializing technology? innovation within a corporation versus, you know, being the leader um, of a emergent startup? Yes. So I like to think that you're doing the same exact work, Uh but the resources available to you are very different. And I, um, so I'm sort of refusing Uh to take off, right? Those years of business experience. I'm not going to take that out of, out of my way of working. Sure. I'm not going to take that out of my toolkit to understand, you know, what is it like to put process in place? Mm -hmm. What is it like to follow a methodology? Sure. You know, what is it like to understand if this business can even be profitable before you spend the first dollar of your investment? Mm -hmm. So it's about Mm -hmm. kind of following the rules, if you will, um, and doing it in such a way that, you know, you have all this opportunity ahead and you're applying the logic and the rules of a bigger business. So, so um, I think that that's definitely an advantage that you have maybe to um, other entrepreneurs that didn't come from such a maybe more structured background with systems, processes and methodology and kind of thinking about that from from the very beginning. Yes, that's great. Yeah. So what are some of the challenges that you think that health innovators face today when they're trying to commercialize an innovation? Well, I think that it's it's seeing the problem with literal, you have to see the problem literally, right? Mm-hmm. And you have to accept that if a problem is there, but it's not recognized by the care community, it's not a problem that you're going to be able to solve very easily. Mm-hmm. And I think one of the challenges is that we get wrapped up in, we can solve a problem. Look at this problem. Look at how we solve it. But if the problem is not seen as impactful enough to solve, that can be a huge stumbling block, even with the most fantastic commercialization plan ever. Right. Um, you won't yeah. get adoption. Right, right. Yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, I, I have that conversation with so many health innovators like yourself um, who really spend years doing a lot of arm twisting. <laughs> right. It's like, you know, twisting yeah. that arm going, you have a problem. Don't you see it? Don't you see it? I see it. You have a problem. <laughs> Let's solve it. And, exactly. and, and either it's just maybe it's not as um, it's not a priority for them. Um, it's not, it's not expensive enough. It's not causing a big enough pain, you know, kind of like you're touching on or, you know, these organizations can just only focus on so many things and it's just not one of their top priorities for the next three to five years. Mm -hmm. You're exactly right. And I would even add to that. So, so my background in corporate America, it is no different on the industry side. Yep. Right. The initiatives come and go. Yep. Right. The commitment to to maybe a a very well laid plan, maybe you run out of runway on that plan. Yeah. And and so it's very, very similar industry and then the healthcare delivery side. Sure. So I totally respect that. Yeah, it might be the flavor of the day for a while. Again, the 30 year journey on telehealth. But now we actually want that 31st flavor. From, you know, we, we actually want to take a bite. So I, I do think it is about shifting sands, shifting priorities and understanding that you have to have to also shift your value proposition a bit to follow that problem all the way through. Yeah, yeah. So I I talk a lot about, um, you know, this failure rate, the the, the just incredible hurdle that health innovators have to overcome, you know, statistically, right? And and kind of beat the odds of success and failure. You know, from your perspective, why do you think some health innovators fail while some succeed? What's, what's, What's going on there? So I, I do think that it is a little more about the method mm-hmm. and a, a little less about, you know, how how wonderful the product might be. Mm-hmm. And I think that in, in, in health innovation, I think the team and the process that team uses to commercialize is as important as what you're commercializing. 
So again, once you have that big problem identified and you and you have a match to that problem, you've confirmed that match. Sure. It is really about the team that's executing it. So sure. the ability to raise enough money to get it to market, sure. the ability to actually engage with healthcare providers in such a way that they have credibility and that mm -hmm. a healthcare provider doesn't push that down the priority list. And it's about being able to deliver on the promises that you're making consistently to all of your stakeholders. Mm -hmm. And I think that's a lot to get lined up for a small business. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. It's it's a lot. Yeah, <laughs> it, yeah it's it's definitely a lot of alignment between people and goals. Um, yeah. Absolutely. So so what advice do you have? Um, actually, you know what, what what are some keys to success? You know, when we kind of talk about these challenges that innovators face and why some succeed and why some fail, what do you think are some keys of success? So I think that, uh, well, first of all, innovation can be defined in so many different ways. Mm -hmm. And I think that uh, the way that you define your problem, answering that problem can be defined in many different ways. Mm -hmm. And the keys to success are to understand um, have extreme clarity, again, around the problem statement and the alternatives to solving that problem. Mm -hmm. The next thing that I believe in, whether you're running a big business, a small business, you're innovating uh, in healthcare or even beyond, it's to prioritize, right? Mm -hmm. And prioritize really just simply means make choices. Yeah. And you have to have a really, really strong foundation to how you make those choices and how you implement the choices that you've made. So I know it sounds very simple. It's not kind of a magic wand or fairy dust that you can put on the situation, but it's really about having some level of commitment to the problem you're solving and to mm -hmm. do that by prioritizing not to try to do everything. So, you know, that's so true, Stacey, because it's so easy to um, get distracted by, like you said, the flavor of the day, right? Or, um, you, you know, th this additional problem that we could solve or, you know, having a, a, a pilot company um, come up with other ideas of things that you could solve for them, right? <laughs> or yeah. how you can solve it differently. And, and there's so many things that are competing for your attention as, as the, yeah. you know, as the innovator. And you've got, gosh, you know, a long list, right? So how many yeah. things are on your list to get done? <laughs> yeah, absolutely. And it's really about determining what you aren't mm -hmm. and, and not focusing so much on what you are. Yeah. So at Air Health, we know we're a respiratory care company, right? Yeah. That's the big yeah. what we are. But then we start carving out what we aren't mm -hmm. or what we aren't right now. Yeah. And even though it, it might get you that first customer more quickly to, to focus on something that you aren't in the long run, again, prioritizing and lining up all of those steps in your innovation process, then in your commercialization process, you'll be much better off for determining what you aren't and mm -hmm. taking it off the table for people. Yep. So what are what are some of the decisions that you've made that um, that you've already kind of started to see some of the fruits of that labor? So we made a decision pretty early on and we used a, a very I'll call it a business school process mm -hmm. where we did um, some very fast business case building around respiratory care. Mm -hmm. and we said drug delivery in respiratory care. What are our options? Yep. What can we do pairing this problem and this technology? Mm -hmm. And we actually came up with 15 unique business propositions. And okay. we put that Wharton hat on and we calculated it and we made <laughs> some general determinations and we landed on the top three. We could do this. We could be this. We could do this. OK. And with that, that was the very first set of decisions that we made <clears throat> of these top three founders, advisors, early team. Which one are we going to be? Yeah. And yeah. what are we not going to be? And those were the first decisions. And then from that, we engaged uh, people and agencies such as yours to actually say to us, OK, fantastic. You've chosen the lane that you're going to be in. Mm -hmm. Now, let's determine if the innovation does, in fact, you know, lead us to the right problem 
yep. the right solution, the right product market fit, and then how would you commercialize this business plan that you have? So it's it's really about, it's just taking it one step at a time. And a little bit of background, you know, having the experience that I have, I understand sure. sort of what comes first, what comes second, what comes third. Yeah. And for innovators that don't know those steps or, or don't feel like they have full command of those steps, grab an advisor, someone mm -hmm. like me out in the marketplace. I was extremely willing to offer that type of help and assistance. Sure. And, and I'm still doing so here locally for a couple of companies in the healthcare space. You know, I, I knew what lane sure. I wanted to be yeah, in. Yeah, yeah. But, you know, if you don't know how to do it, go find someone who does and sure. bring them into your team. Yeah, absolutely. So, you know, because because we've been, you know, we've known each other for a while now, I'm familiar with a lot of the exciting things that's been happening with you and Air Health. So just share some of those um, successes, right? Let's celebrate those wins that you've had, right? Let's just talk about it. And then also I want to know, um, you know, how important do you think in it applying and it, you know, how important do you think those types of initiatives yes. are to your commercialization process? Yes. So mm -hmm. I, I was scared to death to pitch my business. Mm -hmm. All right. So this is the February timeframe. We know what we want to be. We have a beautiful deck. Yeah. Some people thought it was beautiful. Some people thought it wasn't. Go pitch it, right? <laughs> right, right. And so I just said, you know, I'm never going to know unless I start to get feedback on this. I'm going to pick one. The very first one I picked was one of the largest uh, accelerator programs in the United States. And, it, and I was asked to come out to California and uh, present at UCLA, uh -huh. top 30 in the <clears throat> pool. And it, it was, it was game changing for me. First of all, it didn't go very well, the <laughs> first presentation. Maybe you yeah, yeah. could, could say that maybe don't go that big the first time. <laughs> but I'll tell you <laughs> that I took an advisor with me. Uh -huh. She watched me, right? She gave feedback to me. She watched the other people. She went to the reception after and asked questions about what did you see with Stacy? What did you see with Air Health? Help make this better. Mm. Once we had that feedback, I just started applying like crazy. That's invaluable. To, uh, exactly. To events that would have me, right? Uh -huh. So second opportunity locally, Rollins Venture Competition with Rollins College and the Crummer School of Business uh, won an award there. That was a, the first money in the bank that didn't come from us. <laughs> Founders, which right. was a fantastic feeling. Yeah. And then we went, went on in the next couple of six weeks to win Steve Case's revolution um, honor, which is called Rise of the Rest. So we were the first winner in the 2019 uh, bus tour that happened. And, they, you know, we won $100,000. I mean, it was fantastic. Uh -huh. uh, did my first TV, did my first uh, NPR radio it, it, it was really a lot of first. And all I can tell you is um, if you know what you want your business to be and you have a decent way to articulate that with a story, get out there and start telling the story and you will get more than enough feedback to move from where you are into true innovation and solving the problem. That's, that is incredible. Um, I, I don't know if health innovators invest enough time in those initiatives. I think that sometimes they're focused on building the business yes. and, and just, you know, because those things, you know, those applications aren't, you know, five minutes to submit, right? No. <laughs> I can give you a little trick though. Okay. So what, what you do is you, you build a, a content file, mm -hmm. right? The, and it'll evolve, but the way that you want to present yourself in these programs, they ask it all kinds of different ways and want all kinds of different formatting. But if you will create, what is my elevator pitch? What is my business proposition? What is my market opportunity? All the way down the line after you've done one, two, or three of those yeah, and you uh -huh. see all the ways they're going to ask you, keep it in a file and cut and paste it. I can get through one of those applications now in 10 minutes. Oh, that's fantastic. Yeah. That's a great tip. Yes. <laughs> so, so what other advice do you have for fellow innovators and entrepreneurs that are in the trenches right now that are, um, you know, sh some struggling, some having some success, 
Um, some may be really discouraged with have really you know, stuck in pilot purgatory or um, just having little adoption. Um, you know, what, so what is some of the advice and encouragement that you would have for folks? Yes. So I'll blend it together because okay. I, we are not yet in the piloting mode. Um, we do have an opportunity to start a pilot in the fall and we are well on our way to ensuring through the appropriate master services agreements, the appropriate statements of work to really focus on being sure that the pilot, if you will, mm -hmm. um, is a success because we've laid it out from the beginning with purpose yep. and point. Yep. So we're ahead of that. So I don't have a lot of advice to say, as a small company, I'm in the middle of that and know what to tell you. Yeah. What I can tell you is the, the last thing that I did while I was at Philips was to launch a wearables venture. Mm -hmm. And that, that wearables venture was a digital health proposition. We partnered with a company out of Silicon Valley. And with that, we set about on an 18-month piloting program. Mm -hmm. And that I learned a lot from. So what I can tell you. The big names aren't always the best names, okay? So if you can find a good fit for the type of personality that you have as a business and as a leader and the personality and the fit of the leadership and the mission of the health system, doctor, provider, payer, whatever it is that you're going after with your innovation, match the people first, mm -hmm. match the personalities first. So and important. Find so much more success. Um, save the big names, save them for a little bit later, save them for the big, bigger companies because um, they've earned that reward of having those bigger headaches, honestly. <laughs> and, okay, so, so they get the bigger business, they get the bigger personalities. So, um, so I mean no disrespect to the big brands, we'll get there one day. But um, even as a big company, we chose our pilots a little more specifically around fit for purpose, mm -hmm. fit for personality, not necessarily how are we going to get the biggest bang for our marketing buck by talking about this pilot. Brilliant, brilliant, brilliant. I think that that's some true wisdom that everyone could heed um, for sure. So um, they um, so if people want to get a hold of you, what's the best way for them to connect with you? So I will give you my email address directly and please send me a mail. I'm, I'm, I am still on that corporate mindset of before I get out of bed in the morning, I've already planned to, to answer everyone. So that still stuck around. So it is my first name and my last name. So Stacy, S-T-A-C-I-E dot Ruth, R-U-T-H. And that is at air, A-I-R-E dot health. So Stacy Ruth at air dot health, please reach out to me. And our website is simply air dot health spelled the same way. Uh, and you can reach me directly from there as well and learn a little bit more about the company and our progress. What's the difference between launching and commercializing a healthcare innovation? Many people will launch a new product few will commercialize it. To learn the difference between launch and commercialization and to watch past episodes of the show, head to our video show page at drroxy.com. Thanks so much for watching and listening to the show. You can subscribe to the latest episodes on your favorite podcast app like Apple Podcasts and Spotify or subscribe to the video episodes on our YouTube channel. No matter the platform, just search COIQ with Dr. Roxy. Until next time, let's raise our COIQ.